that one is oh, oh right one is that all the dead will stand before God at the great white throne. And the second thing is, in verse 13, the sea gave up the dead, death and Hades gave up the dead, but there's no mention of the manner of death. So that is not relevant to that passage in Revelation 20, 11 to 13. I'm working from the back of the Bible forward in my four passages. And the next passage is Hebrews 11, 32 to 40. Now, <coughs> this speaks about the martyrdom of many saints. We must remember that many of the saints were martyred uh, because they were burned by fire or wild animals ate them. In other words, their physical bodies were either burned up or they were eaten by lions, tigers, etc. So let's, let's read Hebrews 11, verse 32 onwards. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put our foreign armies to flight. In other words, on some occasions, God miraculously intervenes to save life and to give victories. But then the tone changes in verse 35. Women received their dead by resurrection. So resurrection was already known uh, in that time. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. So many saints over the centuries have died various kinds of deaths and their physical bodies were occasionally immolated, in other words, burned, consumed completely, either by fire or by wild animals. Let's not forget also many who have been killed in war with violent explosions, uh, the blitz in the Second World War, bombs dropping on London, etc. In other words, people have died in many different ways. Not everyone has a choice about the manner of their death. Um, and we see that in this passage. Now, our third passage is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Now, somebody had started the rumor in Thessalonica, in the church there, that uh, the day of the Lord has co had come, but there were many Christians already in their graves, and they clearly had not been resurrected. So there was a concern in the Thessalonican church uh, about these people. So Paul has to put them right. First Thessalonians 4.13. But we would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are asleep. That was the way that early Christians referred to those who no, were dead. No, I have it up now, but I can't see myself. I can see everybody else. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, I'll continue. Uh, in the early church, uh, those who were dead were considered to be asleep. In fact, early cemeteries were called dormitories by Christians. So let me read on, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, there's the foundation 
Myself. There's the foundation for our faith. Julie, is it possible to mute Mary? No. Mary, would you kindly be muted until I've finished and then we'll sort yes, it? Yes, that's okay. Or something wrong. That's okay. okay. We'll sort it later. Right. Um, so that's the foundation of our faith, that Jesus uh, died and rose again. Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Again, there's no mention of the manner in which they died. Many of those early Christians would have been martyred in different ways. Um, but what is emphasized is the resurrection, the physical resurrection. And what will be clear in Scripture is that the old body will pass away, and we will be given a new body. And that is what we're looking at in our fourth and final passage. And it's a very famous one in 1 Corinthians 15. The whole chapter really is relevant, but let's start in verse 42. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. In other words, the body that goes into the ground or is cremated or goes into the sea or is blown up by a bomb or eaten by a lion, that body is perishable. In other words, whatever the manner of our death, that particular body is mortal and will end in some way at some time. What is raised then, Paul says, is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. And there he's contrasting the, the resurrection body of saints with the mortal body that we have now. And the mortal body that we have now will perish. It, it is finite, it will be destroyed one way or another. And eventually, we will be given a new body. I like to use the, the analogy of, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen a sunflower seed, but a sunflower seed is a very small seed. It's black with uh, yellow golden stripes. You put it in the ground, and eventually that tiny little seed will grow up to this massive big flower I planted some when I was a child, and I was astonished at what was produced out of these little seeds. And I think that's like our human body, our mortal body. It's sown in dishonor. It's perishable. That seed dies. And then out of that will be given from heaven a new body, which is imperishable, and which Paul says in verse 44 is um, a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, I'm reading on now, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And by the way, at a funeral, when we say dust to dust, ash ashes to ashes, we are echoing Genesis, where Adam was created out of the dust, and that's where our physical body belongs, back in the earth, where it came from. But we will be raised, praise God, uh, a spiritual body. I'm looking forward to that. No aches, pains, uh, no sickness, no tears. Praise the Lord. Now, verse 46 of 1 Corinthians 15. But it is not the spiritual which is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Profound words. Verse 49, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. I tell you this, brethren, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. 
Now, I'll, I'll just pause there. We could read the whole chapter, but let me sum up what we've seen in these four passages. First of all, in Revelation 20, verses 11 to 13, we saw that all the dead will be raised and stand before God at the great white throne. The sea will give up its dead. Death and Hades will give up the dead. And we reminded ourselves that all the dead will include many who have been martyred by burning, by being eaten by lions, many other people who will have suffered from bomb blasts, uh, warfare of various kinds. Uh, we think of the Hiroshima Nagasaki bombs. In other words, the physical body uh, at the point of death is not always preserved. But Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 15, that's not important. What is important is the, the body that we will be given whenever we're raised from the dead. And then again, Paul, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, reassured the Thessalonian church, <clears throat> pardon me, that those who are asleep in Christ will be raised from the dead and will join with Christ in what we call the rapture. And we also looked then at Hebrews 11, 32 to 40, where many saints were uh, executed, killed, martyred in many different ways. In none of these passages does the manner of our death or the, the treatment of our dead body, in none of them does that matter. What matters is our faith in resurrection that because Jesus was raised from the dead, we believe we shall also be raised from the dead. Now, I'm sure that there are lots of questions, lots of discussion to come. Uh, those listening on uh, YouTube, just apologies for the couple of uh, gaps in, in the talk. Uh, the first one caused by me when I clicked an X instead of got it. So I do apologize for that. I hope you're able to follow it and anyway. Julie, bless you. Mary, uh, good to see you. Everybody's being unmuted at the moment. Just we'll get there and just.